Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is a Sturmkovitz. Uh, Sturmkovitz? <laughs> Sturmkovitz Drei Ausserung B. Yes, it's the Stug 3B. You may have seen me playing this one in another video with the stock 75mm gun. This one has the 105mm gun, which is the derp gun. It's capable of doing considerably more damage than the 75mm. Game started. As you can see that it will do 410 alpha with HE rounds, penetrating 53 millimeters of armor, and it's got a burst radius of 1.91 meters. So if you can land the shell right next door to an enemy, you should be able to damage it. It's also got heat rounds, which will do 350 alpha, slightly less, but they've got a penetration of 104 millimeters of armor, so they'll go through some of the thick heavy tanks. So 410 on that one, 350 on that one, and let's see what happens. Well, I'm taking it up to the very west side of the map. There's a pair of trees over here and some bushes. Now, I knocked this tree over first because that's a fallback place. And what I'm going to do is just knock this one th first here on there. And that's going to be my firing position. Okay, from here, I can shoot further down this row. I found that if I pull back, I've got a good bush mechanic position where I can actually shoot at the enemy without being seen but for the start of this battle I'm actually looking further down and yeah there's an enemy 25 TP just behind the windmill pull back use the bush mechanic that's it now I can fire at him but he can't see me when I do it I've got a DSPZ the other side of the uh, light uh, the windmill that's the polish tier 5 medium 75 millimeter gun 25 tp also is a 75 millimeter gun that's also polished 25 tp being 25 ton polish tank the panzer 3 j's moving up now i fired a quick round in that direction Unfortunately, that's announced my position, uh, my um, location. Well, announced that I'm there, but they haven't actually uh, seen me. Unfortunately, we just lost the Stug 3B to the enemy Nashorn. So we know the enemy Nashorn's nearby. It's probably somewhere further down the, the row. Somewhere on the one column. I expect that T25, or 25TP rather, is trying to poke... And you can see this outline appear. Oh, no, I timed that one badly. But he did see the explosion and probably realised that, yeah, there's somebody here. He stayed too long and he took a round for 469, which is a high roll. He's now only got four hit points. And, oh, that was a very bad snapshot. Our Panzer 3J went round the corner to try and get the kill. Unfortunately, he didn't. He got killed. Taken out of the game by the T-52, who's now harassing our DSPZ. I pulled forward just to see where he is. He's actually in a dip there, so I can't get a shot on him. But the DSPZ kills him, and the DSPZ gets killed by the enemy Stug. We just lost our M10 RBFM with three tanks down on the enemy. And you can see I've moved forward because I'm losing all the people who will actually be spotting for me. I do have somebody slightly further ahead of me, it's the T-67 and SAU-40 is moving up to replace the guys who've been taken out so I pulled back to the bush again. Fired around there, right down at the gap, right next door to the house in the hope that there's somebody there. This does not look good. And, oh, managed to, that Stug managed to creep up. But he takes him around for 116. He was tracked. He's still there. DSPZ moves up alongside him. I fire another one in. He gets hit again for 85. He's probably regressing his move now. I think he's pulling back. And there he goes. He's out of the game. The M8A1 comes into sight. And he's very much alongside our T67. I'm waiting to load. Misses with that shot bad shot didn't anticipate him moving almost reloaded fired on the move I lost sight of him due to the bush mechanic ending 
Okay, but I can see where he's headed. He's coming this way. He still can't work out where I am, but he knows somebody was firing at him from this direction. But he's behind the bush now, so basically it's the double bush here. And I've just spotted the Nats Hall and I take out the M8A1. He didn't see me. But I pulled back anyway. I can see the side of the Nashorn. Oh, yeah, right through the gun shield. Low roll though, 386. We're now even on the scores. I fire one in. Unfortunately, it went right alongside the Nashorn. I can only just see the top of his gun shield. No, can't get anything off that pixel shot, really. Okay, so I have to do something about whoever's capping. I can't ignore the cap. We've got people who are nearby the other side, so I'm going to try and get a shot in from this direction. And of course, this vehicle's so low that the wall actually does conceal your position, but if you fire from behind the wall, the shell could impact on the wall, and my binos is about to come into action. There it is. I fire a quick snapshot at the DSP Zeb, but unfortunately I'm seen. He turns his gun towards me. Yep, I get a shot into him, and I've got a reset. Oh, and there's the kill shot. Unfortunately, I was hit in the tracks by the enemy SU-8 from the other side of the battlefield. Now, where is that Nashorn? And why didn't he interrupt and come after me when I was firing at the DSPZ? He's not there. The enemy's down to just three now. They're... Oh, I saw a tree go down. That tree was a lot further south, um, north rather, than that ridgeline. So I think he's actually gone, retreated back behind the ridgeline. There's only three enemies left now. The SU-8, the KV-1 in the town, and the Nashorn. So if I can take the Nashorn out of the game, that means I can devote my time to the SU-8 and the KV-1. There he is. I popped up just in case he spotted me. He didn't. He turns towards me, but... He didn't see me. I was seen there. Potentially I've got the high caliber if I can maintain my damage level, but somebody else might beat me to it. It's only that uh, mod only tells you if you've actually hit 20%, so it means that you qualify for high caliber. It doesn't tell you you definitely got it. You have to maintain the amount of damage you're doing, otherwise somebody else will take it away from you. And the KV-1 is now being torn to shreds by our T-1 Heavy. The SU-8's already gone. He's already been killed. He was in the northeast corner. And there goes the KV-1 to the T-1 Heavy. And it's uh, all over. It's a win. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats and we'll see how this one panned out. Well, this one was an ace tanker. I mean, it's the first ace tanker on this account, actually, my general disturbance account. And I also managed to get a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of my own vehicle and a bruise for metal for getting at least five critical hits. I didn't get a defender, unfortunately, because I didn't reset the cap quickly enough. Uh, the win eight was 9,507, which is super unicum standard. So let's have a look at team scores. Note, the high caliber actually went to the T1 Heavy, he got 2,468 hit points. He was doing far more damage than I was doing. I only get, managed to get 1,967. And the next high score after that was the Nashorn with 1,676. When it came to kills, it was the T1 Heavy and Matilda got four kills apiece. I managed to get three kills, so did the Nashorn. And when it came to base XP, it was the T1 Heavy again, so he actually managed to score top in all three columns. 1,105 base to him, 882 to me, 685 to the Matilda. I fired 19 rounds, got 8 direct hits, 4 penetrations, 4 splash. Damage of 1,967 hit points, of which 1,138 broke more than 300 meters. I did receive 2 hits and 1 splash damage shot during that game, um, unfortunately. I earned 25,761 credits and I got 3,146 XP from the game, so it's an earner. 
and uh, it was a bit of fun as well. It just goes to show that Stug 3B is a very underrated tank destroyer, and with the derp gun, it's actually quite effective inside a town or in a close encounter battle like you just saw. If I was firing long range though, I much prefer to have the 75 millimeter gun because you can do a lot more damage with that gun um, at long range uh, than you can with the um, uh, 75 millimeter, uh, than the 105 millimeter because you're much more accurate. Uh, the 105 does have a kind of derp built into it, which uh, means the shells can go off target and so you might come a cropper, but it's also fun. So uh, if you if you want fun, go for the derp gun. If you want accuracy and damage, go for the 75 millimeter. I hope that's uh, interested you. If you did enjoy that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel, please. And thanks for watching.